So helping inmates escape prison isn't anything new. We've seen it recently with Vicki White in Alabama, but more than 15 years ago, a woman helped a man convicted of felony murder break free. And before she joins us live, this is her story. My name is Toby Dorr, and it turns out I'm not a very good criminal. In 2006, I had a prison dog program and I helped one of my dog handlers escape from prison. It was also a period of time in my life where I was kind of searching. My dad was diagnosed with stage four cancer and my life just seemed to kind of be falling apart. And I fell in love with one of my dog handlers and decided it would be such an awesome idea to help him escape from prison. So this is the first time that someone really kind of challenged me and had in-depth conversations. And I realized that I was attracted to that. And so we had a lot more conversations. And then as my dad got sicker, you know, John's the only person who ever noticed and asked me, what's going on with you? Because something's bothering you. And I just thought, wow, somebody notices me. And by the time he approached me and he had his plan worked out, I was just so far gone and so crazy in love with him that I said yes. I helped him escape by hiding him in a dog crate when I came in to pick up dogs for a dog adoption. And we drove off and we were on the run for 12 days and till we were caught by the U.S. Marshals on an interstate in the middle of the night. And that day was February 12th, 2006. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Please welcome Toby Dorr. Yeah, Toby. Hi. Living with Conviction, we're going to get yep. to your book. I can't Toby, wait. I was just thinking, because like you're very self-deprecating, very honest to the point where it's, I cannot believe how honest and self-deprecating Toby just, is. I was like, she's so honest, just like savage <laughs> with herself. I love this. We have got to know, Toby, I'll be just as honest. What were you thinking? Why did you do this? Talk to me. Well, did you guys listen to Tom's song yesterday? Yes. Because I think he said it all. I know Al heard it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, are you, you saying know, that's what what that's what swayed you was the power of the no, musician? No, it really wasn't the song, but it was the whole persona. I mean, mm. Tom had John Maynard down to a T. It was just he was sexy and full of charisma and and paid attention to me. And mm -hmm. you know, I got to tell you, love takes no prisoners. And when he noticed who I was, I had spent my whole life looking for significance. And finally someone noticed me mm -hmm. and it was like pouring water on a dying plant. Mm -hmm. I was just so far gone, I couldn't say no. Oh, hey, I get that, that. Is that I guitar? Get that. Yeah. Wow. That, yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Hey, I'm here for seeing that, that guitar. But it is a crime. Cool let's, let's just, we have to also say, listen, we're having fun with this, and right. clearly her story has evolved, and she's repented, but at the same time, this is a crime. I oh, just want to. Yes, and now that I'm done yes. being yelled at, well, I'll get back to my question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry. I, I know we're talking about, you know, the Tori was like, you know, why did you do this? And that's a question. I want to know how. How did you, how did, did you put him, did you lift him up? You lifted a grown man in a crate? <laughs> I, walk us through how you did Yeah, that's this. good. Good question. You know, John was in charge of all the crate logistics. I, I worked on the planning logistics, but um, there was a wire dog crate inside the prison that I'd had a pregnant dog and puppies in, and it was a large dog crate. And one of the dog, one of the unit team leaders at the prison approached me and said, I need to have you take this crate out because it's too dangerous to keep this wire crate in here. And John was standing there and he said, well, how about if I bring it down to an adoption event when Toby comes to pick up dogs because this crate's really big and heavy and she's not very big and I'll just put it in the van for her. So he said, I think that's a great idea. And he let the unit team, the guards at the gate know that he'd be bringing down a crate. And then the day of the escape, he told his roommate and some other buddies that he was supposed to be bringing this crate down, but he got called into work. So if he put everything inside a box and put the box in the crate and put the crate on a farm wagon, would they just wheel it down and put it in the van for me? And they said yes. Wow, what an you just so happy to wow. in the box. And these are, this is just like a, a piece of the story. So I have to ask you, mm -hmm. you two were on the run for 12 days before mm -hmm. getting caught. What was going through your head? Did you anticipate that you would get caught? 
I never let myself believe I'd get caught. I never let myself believe that I'd get in trouble if we did get caught. But I think deep down I knew it was going to happen. And, you know, being on the run for those 12 days, the pressure is just so intense. You're always looking for, did somebody notice us? Did somebody see us? And it was a lot of pressure. And I was surprised about how much pressure it was. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm not a very good criminal. And <laughs> I bought a getaway truck for the escape. And I realized it needed to be licensed properly because you got to have your truck license. So I had him send the title to our getaway cab. I, I and I, 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 Jeff, I got to step in. I have to ask Toby a question. Toby, and this, let's, let's get honest for a second. Were uh -huh. those 12 days the most exciting 12 days of your life? Because they, ha I mean, yes. there have to, there had to be that heightened pressure with the hottest man in right. your universe. Yes. I mean, that must have been yes. They definitely were the most intense days of my life, <laughs> wow. and it was like a movie, wow. which I guess it's going to be. Yes. So, yeah, we talked was, to them. Like a movie called crazy. Twelve Days. Yeah. <laughs> yes. well, no, we talked yes. to the people of the movie yesterday. Another follow-up movie. Oh, okay. 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 I'm a producer. Go ahead, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now my question's boring. But did you ever see John again? And what's the difference in Toby now from Toby then? Well, the difference in Toby today is perspective. And, you know, surviving prison really opened my eyes and made me a confident woman and made me realize I could do anything. And that it was important to me to take that experience and find a way to make something good come out of it. So I have used all of the things that I went through to rebuild my life, to become programs to help other women rebuild their lives. And actually six years after I got out of prison, I got married about a year and a half Ooh. after I was out of prison. And my husband and I went to visit John Maynard in prison, Wow, which was a really strange thing. I never saw that happening, but things lined up and I, sent in visitor forms and we got approved wow. and I can't believe I got approved to visiting but uh, Chris and I stopped to see John when he was in prison in New Hampshire and we had a two hour visit <clears throat> and it was a really good experience because you know when we got arrested they put me in one police car and him in another and he went to one jail and I went to another and we never even said goodbye. You we had, just ripped apart. You had closure and you know, yes. I think we could listen to you all day long. <laughs> Luckily you have this book. So Toby, yes. I uh -huh. want to tell our viewers, DBL Nation, make sure you pick up a copy of Toby's memoir, Living with Conviction. We'll be right back. Toby, what a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you so much. <laughs>